to the Star Wars Rebels recap show right here on Collider Video. As always, I'm your host, David Griffin. We're here today to talk about Star Wars Rebels Season 2, Episode 18, The Mystery of Chopper Base. The I'm going to call this, this is the penultimate episode because we get the hour-long finale that I'm sure will kick butt next week. But right here, we're talking about The Mystery of Chopper Base. I am joined by the legendary Christian Harloff, Hello. ladies and gentlemen. What's going on, Collider Video? Thank you, David. Also, the host of our brand new TV talk. If you haven't watched that, you should be. As soon as you're done with Rebels, go over and watch the first episode of TV Talk where this gentleman here and Josh McCuga are kicking some serious butt over there. But I'm ready to talk some Rebels. Talk some Star Wars Rebels. Again, this episode is the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm. We are setting up for the finale. A lot of... I don't know, there's just a lot of people, just a lot of uh, weary faces. Everybody's looking a little tired. Hera, you can see on her face from the very beginning. Let's start with the beginning, Christian. Start talking about the positives here. What do you think about the opening, especially just watching Ezra and Kane and Train uh, doing their best to train anyway? A lot of foreshadowing. Yeah. I think that's what we got here is a lot of foreshadowing. The fact that Kanan is training this dude every day now that they're going on this mission to go after the Inquisitors because they can't be on the run anymore. They have to go straight into battle. And it's revealed that both he and Ezra and Ahsoka are going to go after the inquisitors but there's just little things that were said the, the well why why would you ever be my enemy when he said mm -hmm. don't ever turn your back on your enemy why would you be my enemy and that was pretty much like uh wait a minute they're they're letting you know some things are going down here uh and then you also but i still even though i've been saying that ezra is probably going to turn dark i wouldn't be surprised if they turn canaan because they keep setting you up like Ezra's going to turn, Ezra's going to turn, and like, oh, someone's going to turn. But then it's Kanan. I wouldn't be shocked, but I'm still sick in that it will indeed be Ezra if the, the end of the episode was any indication. Yeah, a lot of hints with the music. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of hints with the music. But the, over, the episode itself was about them discovering this new base, sure. the Mystery Chopper base. I don't believe we got a name for the planet. No, we never did. I mean, maybe, you know, some people last week when I was like, oh, we didn't even, we were hoping to be Yavin 4, but so many people made some great points. Wouldn't it be Dantooine? Because right. Dantooine was kind of mm -hmm. set up first. But I, I liked the setup of the planet and the fact that they that Hera does not want to leave. I got to be honest, I really enjoyed this episode. Yeah. Uh, very much. And I thought that it was, after last week, if you watched, uh, you saw that I didn't love last week's episode. But this one I thought was a return to form because even though it didn't necessarily go to story point A, it still showed, it, it was still furthered along the greater story about the, the establishment of the rebellion base, mm -hmm. the idea that Kanan and Ezra will indeed be going away and we get to see our team interact and act as a team at least one more time before the stuff goes down in the finale. So it was even that kind of calm before the storm where you had Zeb and Ezra like listening to music, land on the beach. Oh, that was awesome. a very war type. Yeah. It felt it felt like every war movie that I've ever seen, where like right beforehand, like I've seen a platoon or something. So it's right before they're ready to go into battle. They're sitting there, just kind of that calm before the storm, that peace, like just sitting back enjoying the sun on the planet. And then I didn't mind all the creatures and everything too. I thought that was a good way to to bring us into back into the Star Wars feel of it. So I, I really I thought it was refreshing. And this is a better episode of a setup getting us yes. into the main stuff than I thought perhaps last week was. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, Zeb talking about sharing war stories when they get back was really nice. Uh, also Hera. I always thought Hera is probably the wisest character of the whole of the whole Ghost crew. And just her just looking and just knowing what's going to happen. You yeah. kind of see Sabine just glancing and looking around and seeing what's going on, just kind of observing everything. And, of course, she knows what's going on, too, even more than Kanan does because Kanan at the end is like, well, what's her problem? What's going on? Why do I need to talk to her? It's like, duh. She's She knows that we need to learn to start doing things without them, which makes me wonder, we're going to talk about this maybe later in our predictions, is if the group's going to be separated for a while when season three starts because she said, look, we're going to have to do stuff without them. They might not be around. Right. And even, I see it's hard because I, I, one of the parts I love is towards the end, of course, when Ahsoka shows up, I love how Ezra knows that he might not see his group again, but he doesn't seem angry about it. Even when he can't use his very good, uh, I don't know if you want to call them not mind control skills, but his uh, tuning, in. tuning in with the animals. He doesn't, can't tune in with these animals, but he doesn't get frustrated at the point of anger. He's just like, well, I guess you and I can't be friends. Right. You know, and they keep playing that Imperial March in the background, which is awesome. The music was great. But I, I don't know, Christian. I'm still not sure if he's going to go bad yet. But it does seem like they're hinting very hard at him going dark in this, yes. in this episode. Yeah, especially the end. But I do. The one thing is that I guess, we'll, you know, we'll talk about mm -hmm. things we didn't like. But um, 
Rex played into this a bit, um, and it was nice to see that he's still part of the team and the, the, the way that they go to rescue him. But it was that ending that you're talking about mm -hmm. with, the, with the music cues. It's like, what does it mean? What does that mean? Because he's trying to tune in, then you get that strange eagle-type creature flying around. Like, what is that? Why? Who's looking over him? Is that someone else I can tune in? Is, right. You know, it's. I really hope that it ties back into something that we've seen in the in one of the original trilogy or maybe even the force awakens but there's something with this kid more than that they're leading on to and you would hope that season three is really season three should be because as as we get so close to the finale here we can talk about what we hope from season right. three season three should just be run through the walls don't stop to do any more of these little fillers episodes i don't get 22 episodes mm -hmm. of just running through the wall you have so much 22 episodes to tell all these stories now. Don't hold back anymore. No more chopper episodes. You know, let's just go straight into this thing and really give me all the breakdown you're setting up from season two. I love to, uh, t speaking of the comics, Christian, there's that uh, series going on right now at Marvel called, I think it's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin yeah. Skywalker. It's a nice little series, and a nice little uh, mini series. And I like how there was a scene, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, where Anakin is trying to communicate with these animals, right. very aggressive animals, trying to, you know, hold, like trying to connect with them so they can get through to wherever they're going, and he can't do it. As powerful as he is, as right. high as his metachlorian count is, whatever you want to call it, he can't do it. And I like how Ahsoka said, you sometimes just don't understand the force it just works in mysterious ways right. even yoda that's why i love and some people don't like this the lost missions i love the yoda arc when yoda is battling with his inner fear because it's as powerful as yoda is he's of course he's not human but no, he, he's, still he, he's still flawed he's sentient, not perfect yeah. yeah so i mean even he has flaws too so i love when they explore these powerful jedi's flaws i think it's very interesting i think it's going to be a fantastic finale i wish we didn't have to wait this long right. until the last hour but i think it's gonna be fantastic so those are all our positives christian what are some negatives about this week's episode i didn't really have that many i mean if you want to talk about the you know not getting back to story point a i kind of think that we did because they talked about the mission to the inquisitors and and the establishment of, of the rebel base or trying to establish a rebel base on this planet so i thought that it did really tie in maybe not front and center as much as we wanted to but i think the thing that bothered me was that i guess that clones just don't taste good to aliens because they <laughs> left him alone yet they killed the rebel pilot you know it's like yeah they couldn't rescue her i thought i was, was, was kind of sad they didn't rescue her because it's like oh well, we're gonna eat her but because we need you guys to rescue one of your crew we're not gonna let these vicious animals who have no brain power really to this <laughs> vile animals yet they're just gonna tie him up to the, the wall. They're, they're saving him for later. He was dessert. He was dessert. <laughs> There's like eight of them. It's yeah. like someone, someone's rushing in. It's like it's like that friend at work that goes in, who ate my sandwich? Who ate the clone? It's like, ah, it was Bill. Um, but so little things like that. But overall, I really enjoyed the episode. Yeah, I agree. I, I think there's very few flaws that I can think of. Great episode. Again, I think last week people maybe took our response that we hated the episode about chop i don't think we hated it it's just because of what we had two weeks ago or three weeks it took a it's break bad placement yeah it's just bad, bad placement. placement it wasn't a bad episode it isn't like the placement of the episode but this one felt right because they are yeah. preparing to go into this conflict so christian i mean we're going to start looking ahead here i mean we're we only have an hour left we're i guess 40 minutes with uh, take away the commercials where are we going to leave off at the end of the season well you know we're getting uh darth maul's coming in it's, mm -hmm. we're, we know that he's coming in. We're going to find out exactly why. I hope we get him within the first five minutes and not the last five minutes of the hour. That'll piss a lot of people off, including myself. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to get him pretty quick. We're going to set him up. I would like to see Ezra leaving season two in great conflict, like mm -hmm. to where he, uh, he starts to understand the dark side more than he even understands the light. And if you're going to take him down that road, I'd like to see it happen in three or in the end of two into three. Ahsoka, we're going to get some kind of resolution. Now, whether or not she's going to go the way of, of the Qui-Gon, we don't know, um, or if she's going to survive the battle. I'm leaning towards the fact that I still don't think she's going to make it. Right. Um, so we will find out how that's going to conclude, and then if that's the case, where Ezra and Kanan go as Jedi moving yeah. forward. And he, I think you're right. I don't think that the crew – I think the crew is going to be in vastly different worlds and be on different missions – I think they should. Yeah. If you're having because it, it's you have to remember that by the time that we get to this point of the season next year, we will be midway through season three next year, right? Mm -hmm. And or towards the end of it. And Rogue One will have just come out a few months ago. Right. The events have to tie up. Yeah. They have to at some point because you're gonna you would assume that they're gonna tie up and I think that they're very aware of it so I think that whatever we're getting closer and closer to the timeline of Rogue One and Episode Four as Season Three starts. Yeah, I I, I think so too. I, I one thing I'm a little bit hesitant on is that someone's gonna go dark 
in the in a finale. And I'm a little bit worried about that. The reason why I say this is because I think it needs to take place over time. I don't think you can get somebody to go dark in 40 minutes. It, they could, they could, of course, do it if they right. want. I don't think they should. So I think if, as like you said, if he's, I like what you said, he's in conflict. Yeah. I like the conflict. I want him to be in conflict next season. So when we do see him, maybe he's wrestling with that. Maybe he's still being trained by the old master. Maybe he's right. still under his tutelage, but it's not going to happen just like that. I hope that they kind of slow that down a little bit. I don't want to see somebody go dark in one episode. I don't think it's going to happen. I think Darth Maul is going to be a big part of season three. I think that I Darth Maul will set it up with Ezra that he's going to be kind of training him in the shadows mm -hmm. hence why Ezra's going to be in the sh in conflict and I think that Darth Maul you know you don't wait if you're going to bring you're going to bring have the ballsy move to bring Maul back into Rebels you don't waste him on on the right. finale cuz it, it's that's a waste if we got the inquisitor for so long and we got these inquisitors for as long as we did then you should get Darth Maul for a good portion of season 3 and and it would be nice if somehow even if our friends from Rebels didn't <laughs> see him. It would be great to have <clears throat> Darth Maul's story end by the hand of Obi Wan Kenobi. Right, that right. would be great because, and you don't have, have you, and no one has to see him except us. I mean, Obi, us mm -hmm. and Obi Wan. No, like the the Rebels, Ezra and and Kanan and all of them. They never have to lay eyes on Obi Wan. But as long as we do, I'd be happy with that. Oh, well, before we go, Christian, I wanted to ask you about. Did you get to watch the Ahsoka trailer? Ahsoka trailer. It was like this little trailer they uh, had on uh, Star Wars YouTube page that a it was kind of yeah, right? a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, it was yeah, a little yeah, yeah, It yeah. was nice, kind of preparing you for the finale. Uh -huh. It does seem like the team, and even Star Wars, Star Wars Universe, uh, Lucasfilm, seems like they are preparing for a death. I hope that maybe it's just trying to throw us off guard, but it seems well, like with that homage, that was yeah. a very big homage. It was a nice trailer, though. They're certainly preparing for the big event. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for perfect uh, perfect time for a plug. Whereas we're doing the the Schmodown show, we and and um, and John Campy and Dan Merle are going up against each other this Friday. The package that we're putting up is the lead up, the build up, yeah. getting you excited for it. And that's exactly what they did. They had the build up for you know that this match is coming. The mm -hmm. finale is going to have Vader and Ahsoka, so they're giving you that nice little package of this is how we got to here. Speaking of Schmodowns, it yeah. sounds interesting. I've been I'm excited to see. He's got some shows coming up. Right. There's one. Round that I'm I'm really interested in seeing. Which I, one's that? I'm interested in seeing Mr. John uh, Roca, John right. Stephen Roca, battle uh, Mance. Scott Mance. Scott yeah, Mance. Oh, man, April guys, 1st, right? Yes, April 1st. They're going up against each other, and that's going to be a, a big, big feud. A lot of smack talking going on there. Because I heard, I heard you and Roca. Yeah, got into speaking it. of smack talking, you know, Chris, usually I'm, I'm, I think I'm a pretty nice guy. You're a nice guy. I, I, I get along with everybody here you at Collider. I'm trying to pick fights, but you know, yesterday we were doing our flash recap show, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Uh, John Stephen Roca was kind of, he's kind of calling me out a little bit, kind of saying, "Oh, you got your TV talk show. I think you're big stuff trying to take over my show because he's the host of the Flash Recap." show so i think he felt a little threatened by me uh -oh. and I, I was a little bit i don't know i didn't like that so you know what i'm calling him out whoa i'm calling john s Look Roca at this. out on a schmodown challenge is that what, what you call a schmodown, yeah, schmodown challenge? challenge okay so i'm win, calling him out win or lose win or lose for roca has a shot at with taking the title here so win or lose if, if he beats scott mance you want him next i'm not scared of him all right i'll see i, I think he's I'll a lot of talk and i don't know i think I, I think he's i don't know something something about him right now i think he's a little he's a little rattled. off right now he's rattled all right guys so you out there you know john roca <laughs> tell him that you want to see him go up against mr nice man himself mr nice that'd be your name <laughs> mr nice david Griffin. nice guy but uh yeah overall schmodown has a lot of drama this show had a lot of drama yes. going forward too and i'm sure we're going to get it in the finale I can't wait. We are going to be back next week talking about the finale, of course, the hour-long finale. And also, and this is a good, Mr. John Stephen Roca himself will be here. So we'll see how, oh, how right. that, that goes. Oh, yeah. It could get a little heated. Maybe we'll find we out if we accept heated. your challenge next yeah, week. Yeah, I can challenge him. Yeah, I can call him out right there. So uh, look for that next week. Of course, I can't wait to talk about the finale with all of you. Let us know what you thought about this week's episode in the comment section below. Uh, as always, you can find us right here on Collider Video. Christian, where can people find you? Well, you can find me on Movie Talk about four days a week. You can find me on Mailbag here as well as Jedi Council every Thursday. Check that out. And like I mentioned, not five minutes ago, on the Schmodown, I will be co-hosting that show with my buddy Mark Ellis and a big matchup between John Campia and Dan Merle. It goes down this Friday. Don't miss it. Please watch those Schmodowns. I can't wait to watch. I'm excited. Also, you can find me, as Christian said earlier, I'll be on Mondays with uh, on TV Talk with uh, Makuga uh, and uh, Mission Aid DeFries uh, every Monday, so check us out there. Also on the Flash Recap Show, and of course here with Christian next week for the Star Wars Rebels finale. Can't wait to talk to you soon. I'm on Twitter, at GriffinDE, and may the Force be with you all. Oh.